So this is this is uh, this is going to be very informal. This is Jessica Hunter Larson, uh, curator of Atomic Landscapes, and I'm going to show the uh, the uh, background and the artist who is running away to the left <laughs> is Jeremy Boland. He's also part of the exhibition, as am I. Um, so Jessica, uh, uh, I am using Periscope here, and we have zero people watching. So <laughs> it was just the proof of concept. We don't care who we offend. <laughs> we don't. We don't care. Um, so uh, walk me through the exhibition. Um, tell me the title and kind of how it came about, and maybe just maybe walk through the artworks a little bit. Okay. Uh, the exhibition, Atomic Landscapes, um, looks at the atomic history and enduring legacy of the Cold War and how uh, those. The history is sort of written on the landscape of the Southwest in this region where so much of the Manhattan Project and the proliferation of the nuclear industry has occurred in the hmm. country. And I was interested in looking at sort of the way that artists have interpreted sites uh, of the Southwest that uncover the ways in which we see and don't see these landscapes, the way in which we sort of repress the knowledge of our cultural ability now to play God. Hmm. And, um, and I think that that anxiety, that history is sort of layered onto the landscape. And so I was looking for artists who uncovered that piece and let us sort of rest in, in, the, in the questions of what the legacy of the atomic bomb and the Cold War are. Very cool. And I'm very pleased to be part of it as one of the artists. Thank yeah. you. Um, so walk, walk me through the exhibition. Can you just give me a quick tour? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start with... Um, Claudia Valdez. Okay. Following you. Great. She did a series called the Trinity Test Site Series. These are two pieces from that series. And this is part of a years long investigation of hers where she visited the Trinity Test Site uh, on the White Sands Missile Range, part of the Los Alamos component of the Manhattan Project. It was where the first successful atomic bomb was detonated. So this is. Um, literally ground zero for the atomic era. Uh, it is a place where the world changed. Uh, on one day in 1945, we assumed the ability to uh, destroy the world, should we so choose. Hmm. Uh, to play God, like yes, you said. Yes, to play God. Yeah. Um, so it should be, I think, by all reasonable estimation, um, maybe one of the most important, if not the most important, historic sites in the world, uh, given the momentous occasion. And yet, it is only open to the public two days a year. So Claudia visited the site from 2006 to 2008, every time it was available uh, to be visited, and took a series of photographs of these nuclear ruins. Uh, the McDonald House, where the scientists worked on the Manhattan Project, the site where the bomb was, was detonated, and some of the buildings where the, the, the project took place, uh, to document something that we don't see, and yet has such a tremendous uh, importance to our history. And these are, sorry to hurry on, but are, these, these are photographs? Are they, yeah, are they're, photographs. they look almost grainy. Yeah. It's yeah. so interesting. Are these archival photographs or something? Or? No, these are photographs that she took. Okay. So she's manipulated them, I think, to have that sort of uh, historic or deteriorating quality. She super saturated the colors, I think, to evoke uh, the radiation, mm -hmm. give it this sort of sense of menace. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, also to make things aesthetically feel appealing, and that is another part of this exhibition, is the use of beauty, um, the use of this aesthetic appeal. Um, artists really um, engaging our senses in order to make us linger in questions and concepts that are, are difficult um, to contemplate. Cool. Just so you know, I think our, our one viewer dropped off a minute oh, ago, but, okay. but uh, I them to go. <laughs> yeah. no, I just, I just, it's, it's interesting because people will jump on yeah. and then there'll be like 15 people and then there'll be nobody. And, um, but it also, it, we can save it. So, um, so, okay. Patrick Nagatani's yep. work. Uh, he's a photographer who has, uh, like Claudia Valdez, who uh, lives in New Mexico and has spent decades investigating questions about the atomic era. Um, and is particularly interested in its effects on New Mexico and, and culture a little bit more broadly. Um, these pieces here from the Nuclear Enchantment series look at the ways in which the nuclear industry has appropriated sacred Native American lands um, hmm. and trying to call our attention to uh, 
the fact that there are stories about our nuclear history that we don't tell. Hmm. Stories of the, the native peoples whose lands have been appropriated, the effects of the nuclear industry on those people, um, and how how this this uh, use of what the establishment considered to be empty land has really affected uh, large swaths of the population. It's interesting. So these are photographs or collages? The, yeah, these are these are photographs that have been manipulated. Yeah. These pieces. It's pretty intense. Um, Alamogordo Blues is a staged photograph. So this is pre-Photoshop, mm -hmm. uh, where all these are, you know actors in the seats. Uh, he created the props. The Polaroids that you see floating above of the nuclear bomb blast are on. Um, you can see monofilament. So yeah. those are actually there. They haven't been added later in any kind of post-production process. Um, and this is a, a piece that calls our attention to the fact that the early atomic bomb tests used to be kind of spectacles and people would come and put on their protective eyewear and you know watch the bomb test and um, think that they were okay that this was this was a spectacle this was entertainment so they're kind of like in a drive-in movie or something in a movie theater it's unthinkable yeah. it's unthinkable and then he has um, slyly uh, uh -huh. inserted Japanese tourists as huh. the spectators of the you know, to draw our attention to the fact that um, the victims of the bomb uh, might not have viewed this really as, as a tech entertainment. Right. <laughs> there were actual real consequences. There's one more, Patrick Nagatani. These are just kind of crazy. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful contaminated landscape. Yeah, isn't it all? Um, cool, okay. All right, where should we go next? Uh, you know, <laughs> should I talk about you? <laughs> uh, feel free. I, I kind of posted a little bit about okay. my work. This is my work. But, but um, tell, me about, tell me how it fits in for you. Okay, so this is the Eric Lepresti's work. And again, I, I was very interested in the way that he deploys um, strategies like beauty or uh, referencing 19th century conceptions of the sublime in order to make a viewer rest again in a subject that's very difficult to that is geographically vast and very difficult to comprehend just sort of physically how much land something like Nevada test site takes up uh, and then conceptually how do we get our heads around this new found power to, to destroy and I also think that there's an honesty about these paintings that I really appreciated that the test site, the caverns, the craters, they are beautiful. They are hmm. like earthworks. Mm -hmm. we, artists have intentionally tried to do this to the earth, to take the place of nature or God and reshape the physical land itself in order to create an effect, to create a, a thing of beauty, a thing of, of awe. Mm -hmm. um, here it's happened through the agency of a destructive force. Um, but I think we can't not acknowledge the fact that they do have an aesthetic appeal, and the creative urge and the destructive urge um, are very much parallel. I mean, they, they are part and parcel of the same sort of human condition. Hmm. I think we have to address that if we're going to be thinking productively about what a nuclear legacy means and what we move forward. So I um, was very interested in, in that piece um, and interested cool. in the access, uh, the idea of the sublime, hmm. you know, as part of this, the sublime wherein nature or God humbles you, right? You go into the landscape and, and part of the pleasure of the sublime is to be stripped bare of ego, right? Mm -hmm. God is bigger than we are. Nature is bigger than we are. We could be rent asunder at any moment. Um, and then the other piece of the sublime is that while you're feeling that, you're also acknowledging, I'm still alive. Yeah. I'm still here. Yep. Um, but if this hasn't touched me because I'm a spectator. So there's that ego, non-ego uh, component to the sublime, which I think is a really interesting part of human psychology. And hmm. these, these works really access that precarious balance between being humble and being sort of smug about right. the fact that you haven't been destroyed. You, you, you're witnessing destruction, but you are still an observer. So. Cool, thank you. And thank you for including me. I'm, I'm self-conscious about videoing my own works, but uh, <laughs> thank you. All right, next one. This is Nina Elder. Okay. Um, this is a series 
that she did sort of specifically about um, nuclear landscapes, uh -huh. and sort of looking at the history of the Manhattan Project and how it's inscribed on the landscape. Nina does a lot of work where she um, uses traditional methods, finely detailed uh, graphite and charcoal drawing, uh, very beautifully rendered drawings of industrial, post-industrial nuclear landscapes. Uh, I think calling into question our notion about a Western landscape with its glorious vistas and unspoiled, pristine expanses. Uh, that's the Western landscape tradition, right? Yeah. But when, and when we drive through these landscapes or we walk through these landscapes, we deliberately don't see the, mm -hmm. the towers and the machinery. You know, we can just say, ah, this is beautiful if I don't look at this piece of it, if I just focus it over here. So she wants to draw our attention, using this very deliberate and beautiful style, to the ways that our industrial and nuclear history are inscribed on the land, and mm -hmm. helping us again rest in this place of thinking about what the implications of that are. This is here. We really do have to deal with it. We can't just drive past it and sort of look at the pretty thing that we want to look at. I think these are really beautiful, and their, her touch is so soft. Yeah. You know, and I know also from talking with her last night that she. Uh, She's walked many of these places, mm -hmm. and so that means something to me that she's yeah. kind of been there yeah. in person. And there's a personal history um, yeah. with this landscape and with the nuclear industry that she's very much exploring. In yeah. Works. Okay. And? And then here we have Jeremy Bowen. Yeah, Jeremy, yeah. who I was just talking with a second ago. Yeah. But tell me what, so he, he told me a little bit about these. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, tell me. So these works, um, another form of documentation and here trying to document um, the seen and the unseen effects of the nuclear industry. Um, one of his techniques is to bury unexposed film in contaminated ground and um, where, where there is uranium decay um, near the, the mine sites, this is, these are by Jack Pyle Mine, one of the biggest uranium mines in the world. Right. Um, where there's decay and the particles bouncing against the film create color patterns. If there were no radiation, it would be clear. Um, so this is visual evidence, tangible evidence of something that we can't see, but affects us very dramatically, can affect us catastrophically. Uh, then some of that film he exposes, so this background piece here is the image of that decay. And then he also embeds um, plants and twist ties and things that he finds on the landscape um, to give us this sense of presence um, so that we can see we're physically confronted with the residues of um, uranium mining, uh, right. which is the, uh, that is the crater that creates the bomb, that <laughs> creates the crater. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So Lots of craters in this. Part and parcel of, of yeah. the industry. Yeah. And yes. again, they're, they're Two of quite these, yeah. beautiful. And they're really saturated, lovely colors. They look like abstract expressionist pieces. Yeah. Post abstract expressionist, a little, a little mixed media collage. But when you start to really uh, dig down, uh, it's very, it's a very compelling way to understand um, the, uh, the science behind. Okay. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They're they're beautiful pieces under their own right. They have these um, sort of tactility to them, like a texture. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Okay, next. Oh, right, okay. So, these are two more of Jeremy's yeah, pieces. Where there's more, a little more documentation of the actual site and then where the film was buried. And then so you can see sort of the correlation between a beautiful natural scene that looks uncontaminated, but then the ground is poisonous. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is from the water. We submerged this film. In, in the water itself, so the water is also contaminated. And then back here, there's something behind, there's a big curtain here. There's the curtain. This is a really beautiful gallery, it's very tall. Okay, and uh, what's behind the curtain? This is one of Claudia Valdez's paintings. Oh, cool. It's called Minutes to Midnight. Uh -huh. This was also part of the Trinity Plant Site series. And she, what she's done is it's a performance piece that she did where she is running from the McDonald House we saw a photograph of that stuff. Before. We don't think I'm going to pan back where, over. This is the headquarters of the Los Alamos Manhattan Project. the Manhattan uh, House. Yeah, this is where the scientists worked on the, on the science to create it. And she did a performance where she ran away from the house, mm -hmm. kind of in this overdramatic 
style referencing like B grade science fiction movies. Mm -hmm. uh, so many of them that emerged right after uh, World War II, uh, where People, where the nuclear anxiety was really present in those films. So she's sort of taking the persona of this um, of a, a nubile young woman who's always right. in those movies, running away from disaster, um, which is sort of yeah. al alluded to the bright sky behind. Yeah. Um, There's a figure that comes out of yeah. here. It's really yeah. slow. It's, it's slowed down. It's, I think it's, I can't remember the ratio, but this is 10 minutes long. And it was probably took her, you know, like a minute or two to make right. this run. There she is. She's running She's across very, the window. Yeah, it almost looked like nothing is happening. But then as she emerges, you start to see kind of the, the pathos in this really, um, really intriguing way. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you, Jessica. And, and um, thank you for including me in this exhibition and guiding us through this. I'm going to post it now, and then I'm going to send you the link. All right. Come to Colorado and see it. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. You one person who's watching. <laughs>